InDesign. Like I said, it is made for print InDesign to create print stuff, but you can definitely create all other cool stuff in there. We just focus on the print. Um, and uh, let's close this up. And you see it directly when you open up and it says, hey, what do you want to do? Create a print document, a web document, or a digital publishing document, or a book. InDesign is really there to create big, large books, magazines, everything uh, uh, smaller than that for you. So really large amount of text are perfectly handled in InDesign. It's perfect to set up all your uh, reports that you have to deliver instead of the <laughs> ugly and stupid word that you may be using all the time. Uh, you definitely can use InDesign for that. So that would be good if you would do that next time, right? When you have to hand in a report. Um, like I said, we're only, fo only focusing on the print here. Uh, but there are great tutorials on adobe.com about all the other stuff in there, so go figure that out also. If you create a new document, a lot of it looks a bit like Photoshop. The whole interface is from Adobe, so it looks a bit the same. Uh, but there are some issues, or issues, there are some things to consider here. Of course, it says here number of pages. Well, what we want to do now is actually create this, right? We want this size. So let's imagine this is an A4, one A4 size, uh, and if I open it, it would be A3, right? Stitched together. And in InDesign they call that facing pages. So that's the mark here actually. It's facing pages. And if I would give you four pages, it's going to give me a front page, inner pages, and outside page. Okay? We will see that in a minute how it works. So we got four pages, and the inside here we call a spread. So this is one spread. And one spread consists of two pages. That's it. This is the front page, back page. Um, so for now I'm going to say it's an A4 page, but I want you to really measure up the document. So how big is it? And Because then you really notice how precise you can work in InDesign and how precise you can measure everything and put everything in there. Uh, so be really precise, measure up, this is not an A4, it maybe looks like one, this is not an A4, all the, doc all the magazines are not A4. Um, then, beneath here is columns. So, you know what a column is, I guess. So on this page, I got two columns, right? Uh, two columns with text, and in between there's all kinds of stuff. But I don't bother about that, I'm going to take the rough version of this page, and that's two columns. So I'm going to add up two columns here, and then it says here gutter, and on the paper I gave you, uh, you see also two columns, and gutter is also there with an arrow. So the space in between two columns, that's called the gutter. So you measure it up, what the gutter is, and then you can put that there exactly here in millimeters in uh, making a new document. Okay, so that's the space in between two columns. Then beneath there, there's margins. And margins is top, bottom, inside, outside. Well, you guessed it. Uh, the, from the page to where the text starts and the top from where the text starts, that's the margin. That could be different, though. And from the outside and the inside. Um, probably your link is still linked. So unlink it, and then you can really make it per page different in uh, size. Then you got something else. And that's the bleed and slug. And the bleed is also mentioned on the paper I gave you. Uh, if you create a magazine like this, you have photos, pictures, up until the end of the page. It's very hard to print to the end of the page. So what they do is actually, having a bigger page, print over the edge of the actual page and then cut a piece off. So then you really have a sharp edge you really don't have no wide, thin edges. Have you ever tried cutting some paper edge? It never works out, right? You really should have, be, have a machine for that. So you actually print over the page, and then you cut it a bit off. And that's the, on the paper I gave you, you see bleed. So there's an extra red line. Uh, it's black and white, but you will see it in a minute. The bleed is the extra space outside of the document space 
document size that it, you need to put some picture in if you want to have it printed on all the way to the edge. This size, because you can set it, I say now five millimeters, but that's given by the print shop you printed with, the print service. They say to you, okay, our machine, we need five millimeters of leads for that. Okay? So, the slug, don't worry about the slug right now. Just leave it at zero. Um, so if I hit OK, I got my front page, right? And if I scroll down, there's my middle pages. And you'll see the red line, that's the bleed outside. Then you have the paper edge, that's the black one. And then you have your margin. Two columns, and in between, there's the gutter. See that? So well, that's the setup of the page, and there's the last page up there. So for this exercise, we're only going to fill this up, the middle two pages, recreating that. Clear so far? Hmm? Cool. Okay, uh, so if you have it open here, you see there's a lot like Photoshop, basically, right? <coughs> so on this side, you have a lot of tools. On the top, you have a lot of settings if you have selected some uh, element. And here you have things like the pages, you have an overview of the different pages you have. Uh, you have layers, just as in Photoshop, you can work in layers. Everything could be in one layer here, or you can create new layers. And they all have their own color, and you will see that they correspond with the things you have in the document. Uh, links and other things we will talk about later. Um, so, the basic tools you need to recreate this document for now is the text tool, that's the type tool, the T, and if you select it, click and drag, and you can create a text box. Now if you have a document here and it's a lot of text, I don't expect you to type it over. It's a waste of time. So if you have a text box, and I can type here now, you could do that, just type random stuff. You can also say type, fill with placeholder text, and it fills itself up with the Latin Laura Mipson text. Is there someone at the door? Yeah. <coughs> Hello. Sorry. Welcome. Take a seat. Uh, so you have a placeholder text now you can use. So this text is my main text here now. And um, this is the text box. I can move it around. I can make it a difference in size. I can do things with it. You see it's red. Like I said in the layers, it now is inside my red layer, here it is. And I can also drag it to the blue layer and it becomes blue. But this works exactly as in Photoshop. So if I have an image or an artwork or whatever, what's on top you see first and what's beneath it, well, disappears underneath it, right? Okay, so that's the text box. Now let's see, I have here a tool, if I hold it long, down long, you can create rectangles, ellipses and everything. So let's take an ellipse, click and drag, hold down shift to make it a real circle. And you'll see it is a circle, but it doesn't, I don't see it actually. It's only the artwork itself. That is because as you see here in the top, it has no stroke and it has no fill. That there's a red line through it means there's nothing. So if I give it a stroke, I see black. See, now it's there, black. And if I place it here in the text, it goes through the text. I can let the text go around this shape by going to view b b window, sorry, and text wrap. You know that tool from Word probably, whatever uh, word processor you're using. Uh, and text wrap lets you to select an object, uh, let the text go around it. You can choose this one, wrap around the bounding box, so that's the square. I let it go around the shape itself, so whatever shape it is. It's now sticked, uh, stuck to this um, uh, line, so you can expand it a bit. There it is. And you will see that if I move then the um, circle, uh, text goes along with it. So the text itself, of course, you can set anything with it in terms of the how to uh, um, create a layout or create different fonts and everything. If you double click on the text box you get into the type and you have of course here at the top all kinds of options um, and you can go to type character 
there's a whole box full with the characters <coughs> itself, the font, the sizes and everything. And there is paragraph in which you can actually lay out the different um, uh, ways of the paragraphs and how they're being laid out. Uh, explore them and use them in the uh, recreation of it. Um, so the text box has, has another important feature for if you're having large amount of texts. You see that because I put this one in, and actually let's make it a bit shorter, and put in another text box for a title. There, make it big. This is a title. And uh, let's see, I'm just going to make it big. There, a bit smaller, and I'm going to let it be filled. So it ends up here with my margin there, and it starts with my margin there. There it is. Uh, but my text is now becoming much smaller, but those that text is important. Somebody wrote it and it needs to be in there, right? Uh, a, there appeared to be now a red plus at the bottom and that means there's more text than that fits inside the box. To get that text visible you can click on this red uh, plus and a link sign appears. And I can click and drag anywhere else to create a new text box and the text continues then in that box. So let's adjust it to the margin and the column and to the top there so that also means that if I'm going to make this one smaller the text will continue in the other box you see so you don't have to worry that text will be gone you just need to make sure that if there is a red plus and there it is again you see here it doesn't fit there's more text so you can link text in that way and that's a very handy helpful feature all right so let's put some image in here. Um, I already downloaded some image. Uh, it's a pizza, is that okay? I guess so, right? Uh, the official way is go to file and say, where is it? Place, there. Uh, don't say file open because then you're, of course you're trying to open an InDesign file, right? So you want to place some image in here. Uh, and that's with most of the image that you're going to put in here. There's my hot pizza. And I can click and place it somewhere inside the document. Um, so this is a link to this file, to this image file. So that means if I only have the InDesign file, I don't have the image and it's gone. I need to link it again. Remember Premiere Pro editing? It was the same thing, right? You had your project and then all the video files were linked to that. Same thing here. InDesign has uh, no images in it. You can do that, but it's not common to do it. Please don't because it could be uh, messed up. Um, so link it to the original file. You can also see here there's a little link. Uh, that means that if you're saving your work for later editing, it's handy to save everything. Well, InDesign has a feature for that. I will come back to that later. It's called packaging. So this image, it's in there, but it's too big. We want to have it smaller because I want to have it in there in this column as well. So you would expect if I'm going to click here, make it smaller, there, what happened? Anyone tell me? I only make the box, the bounding box smaller, but the photo is still behind it. So if you double click it, you see the original image size we just had, right? So I can actually just move it around, but my layout will stay the same and um, the box in which the image is, is still the same. So that's very handy if you want to really lay out a, diff a certain kind of format inside your document. Um, but I can of course make the picture smaller, hold down shift to keep the correct uh, ratio. There it is. There's my picture. Same thing here, if I would want it to have it uh, like full spread here, and make it bigger. I'm only making now the outside box bigger. So I have to double click it and see, okay. I have to make it all the way here. It doesn't look that tasteful, but okay. Something like this. My text is now behind there. So I need to be careful. Let's get it up there. Doesn't fit here. Doesn't fit there until where still have some space here 
Um, well, and in this way you can figure out the best design for your text, your images, and how you want it. So if I would want the text all the way to be all the way there, maybe I want this first part here to be bigger as an introduction. That's a bit too big. Something more like this. Maybe I need this beautiful artwork to be there. Oh, it's going to be so nice. And let's make another one. Put it here. So now we have it kind of the same level there. So every text is in there. If you press W on your keyboard, you're going to have this preview of uh, the page. So then all the boxes things are away. So you see that also the gutter and all the other uh, margin uh, lines are gone. This is your preview of how it would look like when you print it. Okay, so basically with these tools you can recreate your uh, magazine uh, inside. Uh, probably I forgot something. Images and links, place all the text, file and package, that's important. So I got now some artwork, text, a title and an image. The image is not in there. If I want to send all this to someone to edit it or to print it, it's very safe to send everything with it. That also means the fonts that you're using. So everything. Uh, InDesign can do it by, by itself by going to File and Package. And it gives you a summary. The standard thing in here is that it packs everything into one folder for you to have. So leave this, save package. Of course you need to save your thing. So this is pizza number two. You can give some instructions for the printing people, but never mind. And here it says, okay, to which folder do you want to have it saved? It copies the fonts, it copies the link graphics, it includes a PDF and IDML, that's a different format for uh, the InDesign package. Uh, everything is in there. So I say package it, doesn't matter, this is something about uh, uh, copyright stuff, we don't mind. Uh, and if I look now what he exported it, on my desktop there is pizza2, the folder. This is what he exported, that's a PDF. Looks like this, my front page was empty. This is my page, right? This is the other page, and the last page, it's empty as well. It's the InDesign file, it's the IDML file, the other type of file as InDesign. Here are my links, that's my image, my hot pizza, instructions, and the fonts that it's using. So this is a very safe way to back up all your stuff uh, on which you've been working, right? Um, so that's handy to do also with your file in the end of this one because this one is needed for uh, next week also to continue working in other stuff. Yes? Um, when you package it and then you want to reopen it later and keep editing, do you have to package it again or do you just save it in those? <coughs> if you save it in here, of course, it's still in there. But if you put new images in somehow, it doesn't copy it automatically to there. Okay, so you have to package it. So then you can package it again. Or you should be very careful and first copy all the images to a certain folder, right? So if you're very structured, very nice. If you're not that structured, do this every time. Okay. Yeah, so it's safe. That's why. Any other questions for now? No? All right. Then, let's suggest that there's a bunch of magazines here. There's enough, I hope. Pick a magazine, look at the inside, take something with text and images combined, and such a page, page go recreate in InDesign. And really measure everything. And it starts with if you make a new page in InDesign, all the measurements should be taken into account. So that's the idea for now. And in that way, you really practice working in InDesign. Um, let's see. Yeah, let's start with that. Let's go. Uh, those magazines are not mine, so, you know, and I need them back. So how can you measure? Because I don't have a... A ruler? Oh, That's I, why I printed oh, these. You're so smart. <laughs> Thank you. Thought of everything. Hi. Hi. Yeah. 
Yes. Yeah, uh, in design from this right, you create a house. Yes. Yeah. But if I click it, and I bought it last year, mm -hmm. they say a business layer, and it doesn't work. It doesn't. Doesn't do anything now. No. And uh, have you deinstalled the green cloud and reinstalled it again now? No. I don't or have you closed this one also here and then also there? And then reopen it again? Maybe that works. Close that one. Yeah. And it's probably in there. Right click it. That's gone. And let's open it again. Now that's the, uh, the link to. Okay. Then go to your settings. Oh, oh yeah. it's handy. So go to your settings of uh, the computer. I have no idea what it is. But your computer, you should know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's because you need to deinstall the program okay. to see what's going on. Oh, wait, no, if you go here. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. There. Uh, and then I think there. Yes. And then. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 yes, let's remove it. <laughs> that one. And then remove it. <laughs> Normally, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I guess you're already doing that. No. Okay, so I have to remove it and reinstall it. I guess so. But in the meantime, you can maybe work on the PC here. Yeah, I put it also on SharePoint. Yeah. No, because that's still running. I will cancel that now. <laughs>